Hi everyone and welcome to this week's CCB Kids on Sundays. My name is Ed from Christchurch Beckenham and we're going to be continuing our series here, thinking about how God has been present all through history, yesterday, today and will be forever. And last time we thought about tabernacles and tents and how God's presence was on the move with his people, the Israelites, as they left Egypt and moved towards the promised land. Today we're continuing that story and we're thinking about King David as he asks to build God a permanent home, a temple, a place where God can live. We're going to think about that story in just a bit, but today we're going to ask one of our team members, what does God is with you mean to you? When I remember that God is with me, it's like finding peace in the eye of a great storm. The sky might be dark and thunder might be crashing around me, but God is there and he's holding my hand. I know that I'm not alone. I can face life's hurricane and know that I won't be blown away because God is bigger. Do you remember last time we talked about how God's presence was on the move? God had taken up his home in a tent, a special tent called the tabernacle. We heard about how he'd given the instructions of how to build the tabernacle to Moses. And the Israelites, they carried the tabernacle all the way through the time of Moses and until they were led by Joshua into the promised land, all the way through the judges. And finally, the Israelites were led by King David. In the book of 2 Samuel, we can read King David was living in his palace and the Lord had given him peace from all his enemies around him. Then David said to Nathan the prophet, Look, I am living in a palace made of cedar wood, but the ark of God is in a tent. David wanted to make a permanent home for God, a temple. David felt a bit bad that he was living in a palace and God was still in a tent. Can you imagine a house built for God? If you were going to build that house, what would it look like? If you're on your own, why don't you just have a think about that now? But if you're in a group of more people in your house, why don't you pause the video and chat about what that house might look like? Then we read this. Nathan said to the king, go and do what you really want to do because the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke his word to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Will you build a house for me to live in? From the time I brought the Israelites out of Egypt until now, I have not lived in a house. I have been moving around all this time with the tent as my home. As I have moved with the Israelites, I have never said to the tribes whom I commanded to take care of my people Israel, why haven't you built me a house of cedar? If you're David, how are you feeling right now? He was probably feeling a bit low, that his plan had been cancelled or changed. Well, God also told Nathan that he was going to make some big promises to David. God wanted to promise David that his ancestor, one of his sons, was going to be the next king. And not only would he be a king, he was also going to be the one to build the first temple. And an even bigger promise was that his kingdom would be everlasting. David praised God for all these promises and for his faithfulness to him and for being with him the whole time through his whole life. We can learn so much from the life of David and from this particular story. It can be so hard when our plans are cancelled or things fall through or it feels like doors are being closed in our faces. It's so interesting how God can work in the closing of a door just as much as in the opening. I think it's a big part of why David was rejoicing and celebrating after all this happened. Yes, God made David promises, but God makes us promises too. God promises to lead us, to protect us, to save us, to care for us, and promises most of all to love us unconditionally. When you think about that, that is definitely something to rejoice for, even when things are tough. God's plan is always so amazing because you know what? He did keep those promises to King David. David had a son called Solomon 
and Solomon was a king and he built the first temple. Those were two of the promises that God made to David, wasn't it? But not only that, God promised David that one of his ancestors would have an eternal kingdom. And that wasn't King Solomon, because Solomon was a person just like you and I, and he didn't have an eternal kingdom that lasted forever. But there was someone that did, and we talk about him and we call him King Jesus. Jesus was uh, born into the family tree of King David, and through his life, death and resurrection, he allows us entry into that kingdom of God, which is an eternal kingdom. It lasts forever. So let's rejoice, even in those moments where it feels like doors are being closed on us, because God can work in those moments too. Maybe when you are feeling like that and when one of those moments happens to you, maybe just ask yourself, where is God in this? Try and think about where is God in this decision? Where is God in this plan? Where is God in my life right now? And keep rejoicing in the good news of King Jesus. Luke and Becky are going to lead us in worshipping together now with a new song for us at CCB Kids. Why don't you use the words that appear at the bottom of the screen to sing out this truth that God is with us wherever we go. Carol and Graham from our Climbers team at CCB Kids are going to bring us today's prayers. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you are with us in all we do and wherever we go, guiding us, leading us, caring for us, protecting us. But sometimes we forget you're there and we feel lonely or worried. You may be worried about going back to school or are missing our friends, or are worried about the COVID disease. Thank you for giving us the Bible so we can learn about so many people who felt just the same, but found that you were there with them just as you are today. Thank you for people like Jonah and the disciples who got caught up in storms and were frightened, but God was with them and saved them. Thank you for the story of Moses and how you were with the Israelites as they travelled in the desert for 40 years, not knowing what each new day would bring. Today, we hear news about so many things around us that are frightening. Please be with the people of Beirut after the explosion there, with teachers as they make plans for going back to school. 
with world leaders and our church leaders as they decide how to open things up and keep us safe. And please help us to remember that you are with us all the time. You're there when we're happy. You're there when we're sad. You're there when we're naughty. You're there when we're good. You're there when we're awake. You're there when we're sleeping. Thank you for your promises to be with us all the time, whatever's going on and however we're feeling. May that make such a difference to us this week that your love will shine out from us and be seen by others we meet. Amen. We hope you can join us on Wednesday the 26th of August for our Make a Big Noise online family fun event. There's still time to sign up if you want access to our Zoom call that day and to receive the activity pack that we'll deliver to your door.